Movies are something we all enjoy, some comedy and others action, but today we're going to be looking at something a little bit darker. Today we're going to be covering some of the most disturbing movies ever made. What's going on everybody? My name is Chris and welcome back to Scarier Than You Think. Today, as I said, we're going to be covering some of the most disturbing movies ever made. Some of these movies I do go into grave detail about, while others I don't. Some of them being pretty self-explanatory where I can cover them in pretty quick segments, and others where I do have to go into a little bit of grave detail without trying to give away the whole entire ending, but still give you the premise of the movie itself. They do progressively get a little bit darker, and I am doing it in a little bit of an iceberg fashion, I guess. I did take bits and pieces from an iceberg and kind of made my own list. So if that sounds good to you, sit back, relax, and let's hop into the video. Megan is Missing. Megan is Missing is a 2011 found footage psychological horror film that follows our main protagonist, Megan and Amy, two 14-year-old best friends. Megan is extremely popular in school, but unfortunately at home her mother is struggling with a drug addiction. Amy, on the other hand, isn't popular at all and actually gets bullied quite frequently. Once the attention really isn't enough at school, Megan goes elsewhere, finding a random boy named Josh online. The weird thing is every time they Skype, he never wants to turn on his camera, claiming that it's always broken. She ends up going to a party where she's supposed to meet Josh. Throughout this whole entire party, she's been looking for him and doesn't find him. He texts her back and says that he was at the party that night. He was just really intimidated to come up to her. And that he's out right now, and that she should meet him behind the diner. Megan agrees to meet Josh behind the diner, and that's the last we see of Megan. Pictures then surface on the internet of Megan in an explicit way, which you can see are tied up, meaning that Josh kidnapped her. Amy then gets in contact with Josh, saying that all she wants to do is help Megan and get her free. So then she decides to meet him behind the diner as well, and she suffers the same fate. Once Amy wakes up, she wakes up in a cell. Josh then pulls over a giant blue barrel, saying once she gets inside of the barrel, he'll let her free and drop her off anywhere she wants to go. But once he opens the lid and she looks inside, there's Megan's dismantled body. The movie's more or less based on why you should never trust anybody you meet on the internet. No matter if you've been talking to them for years or not, you never really truly know who someone is, especially when you just talk to them over the internet. And anyone is capable of kidnapping someone, especially if someone doesn't know who they truly are. The Human Centipede. The Human Centipede is a Dutch body horror movie made in 2009. It follows their main protagonist, Lisa and Jenny, who are tourists from New York visiting Germany, who unfortunately get a flat tire on their way to a nightclub. And to seek help at the nearest house, unfortunately being a psychopathic doctor named Dr. Joseph. He then drugs and kidnaps both of these women, sticking them in a makeshift medical ward. He later kidnaps and unalives a truck driver, who unfortunately wasn't a perfect fit for his experiments. Later finding out that he also abducted a Japanese tourist, Joseph is a retired world-renowned expert at separating Siamese twins, but had dreams of making humans skew together. His goal is to surgically attach these people anus to mouth, having them all share a single digestive system, which side note is just some of the weirdest stuff I've ever heard of in my life. His prior experiment was with three Rottweilers, but unfortunately they expired due to massive trauma throughout this whole entire experiment, meaning that he had to move up to humans. The movie itself is extremely sickening, and the fact that it was even made just makes my skin crawl. Only one of the three people ended up surviving in this movie, and unfortunately it's the middle person, meaning that they have dead weight, no pun intended, on both sides of their body. Terrifier. Terrifier is a 2016 slasher film following a sick and twisted clown named Art, who more or less just goes around unaliving people. The only reason this movie's on this list is because it's extremely gory. Every single scene in this movie has some type of gore in it. It's very extreme, a lot of the roles in the movie itself are extreme. The plot is really, really good, don't get me wrong, but the movie is more or less just a gore-based horror movie that has a clown with a clown suit on that just unalives people constantly. Any weapon, anything, it's just a gore fest, and there's actually another one that just came out recently, Terrifier 2, which I found to actually be more gory than this one, and actually a little bit better. The backstory itself really doesn't matter because the movie itself is just a gore slasher film. Check it out if you like those kind of movies. Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust is a 1989 Italian found footage cannibal horror film, where an American film team disappears in the Amazon rainforest while making a documentary about cannibal tribes. The movie more or less depicts every single person's experience while being on this island, and shows a lot of graphic and gory detail with what happens when you do encounter cannibals on a cannibal island, more or less. A few survive and a few don't. The movie's actually banned in a good amount of countries due to the fact that it is pretty gory. The movie more or less is pretty extreme, so if that's your kind of thing, then you should definitely check it out. Faces of Death. Faces of Death is a 1978 American Mondo horror film. If you're not sure what a Mondo horror film is, here's the quick definition. A Mondo horror film is an exploitation documentary film, something that goes into grave detail about topics that most people don't want to cover or talk about, kind of like the Cannibal Holocaust. The movie more or less narrates a ton of extremely violent crimes, having police body cam footage, people unaliving themselves, and more or less being extremely gruesome. Some of the most iconic scenes were actually faked in this film, while most of the pre-exiting footage was actually real, of real deaths an actual aftermath of crimes. As I said before, the movie more or less shows real-life police unalivings, beheadings of chickens, dogs fighting, SWAT team footage, and just some of the most messed up stuff you can watch. This movie was actually banned in New Zealand in 1981, up until all the more graphic parts were taken out of the movie and then sold in VHS. 
Slaughtered Vomit Dolls. Slaughtered Vomit Dolls is a 2006 serialistic exploitation psychological horror film. And trust me, it's the most messed up on the list. It follows a teenage runaway who suffers with bulimia. In order to make ends meet, she becomes... As the bulimia worsens, she then starts to experiment with hallucinogens, where she experiences multiple visions of death of her and fellow and various other people. In one of the most graphic scenes in the movie, a man chops off one of the woman's arms, shoves those fingers down his throat, throws up into a cup, and then drinks it, and repeats and repeats and repeats. This has got to be one of the most revolting movies I've ever, 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 ever just seen, witnessed, just anything. This is not something for, you know, for the normal. This is not, this is some weird, weird shit. And the most messed up part is a lot of the vomiting, screaming, and crying throughout this whole entire film are real. Those are real live soundtracks of people actually being in pain. That alone has to be one of the most messed up things I've ever heard. So that's going to do it for me today, guys. Hopefully you did go and enjoy today's video. And if you did, don't forget to smack a like on it. That'd be greatly appreciated. We are back with the normal videos. I absolutely love making videos like this. So comment down below what else you guys want me to cover. And I will definitely do that. Thank you guys so much for all the recent support. It truly does mean the world to me. But with all of that being said, my name is Chris. And of course, I will catch you guys in the next one.